Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Gotham Chess Openings video. Today I'm super excited to share with you a weapon with the black pieces, the Yanish Gambit against the Rui Lopez, one of the most popular openings that white can play. This video is a kind of a, a, a sibling video to a video I made seven days ago on the Dark Knight Gambit, a gambit against the Italian opening. So you should watch these two videos together just in case you stumbled across this video many, many months into the future. Uh, and also, the Yanish Gambit is actually in my recommendations of the Gotham Gambit's course for black. There is a link in the description. So obviously in the course I go into much greater depth. There's uh, a lot more analysis than in this video. Today's video is going to be a theory section. I'm gonna show you the weapon first and all the moves are in the description. You can copy paste them into Stockfish, whatever you wanna use to analyze. Uh, and uh, after that we have two practice games against subscribers. Um, so today we are covering e4, e5 and the Rui Lopez, Bishop b5, a very classical opening. Uh, the other video, we looked at the Italian, so the other major bishop move, looking to get a you know, fried liver attack, knight attack, whatever. Today I'm recommending for you in this position the eighth most popular move according to major databases, uh, but the only move that scores positively for black. 53% from this position, f5. f5 is an incredible move. It is a daring move. And if you play the Vienna with white, you'll notice that these Pawns and knights actually look like a Vienna Gambit reverse. Now, why are we playing f5? What the heck is the idea here? There are three ideas of this opening. Um, the first is that if white ever takes on f5, what we are doing is shoving our pawn forward. That is, that is the point. This attacks the knight, and now that knight really can't move because we have these pieces controlling those squares. After that, we will bring our queen, we will bring knights, pawns, uh, in fact, if white were to retreat out of the middle, already the best move for us is this very powerful queen g5. And that threatens to just take this pawn, take this pawn, and it also prevents queen h5 check. This is all in the description, by the way. But that is the first idea. If they take on f5, we shove our e-pawn forward. The second idea is if they reinforce the center, uh, we actually want to take... And then what we want to do, and this is actually practice game number one or number two, I can't remember at this point, uh, number one, I think. Uh, the other idea is that when we were to castle, uh, the F file is open. So when we take on E4 with our F pawn, then the F file is open for our rook. You're going to see this rook come into action later in the game. Uh, and we actually have a, have a game that, that is exactly like this, bishop before queen E2. I sacrifice this pawn and then I castle. So that's the second idea. And the third and final idea is if the opponent takes our knight, we're going to take with this pawn to open our queen and our bishop, okay? So those are the three central ideas of the Yanish Gambit. Now let's dive into specifics. The most popular move is them taking our knight. You are probably going to face this more often than not. Uh, the second most popular move most likely is to take this pawn straight up. So they take our knight, we open the queen and the bishop. Um, We've already discussed what to do after pawn takes f5. We know that here we're shoving the pawn forward, then taking back. Uh, if they take on e5, here is where we enter the 72% win territory. In this position, we have to attack both of these things at the same time with our queen. The way we do that is we play the move queen to d4, and now both things are under attack. Now, if white is just to move back, we take the pawn with check. We are just much better on move 7. Because we can trade queens, you can develop your bishop, you can castle queenside, you have the bishop pair, white's king is in the center, so you're very happy. However, what mostly happens here is people see this check, and they go, ooh, yes, and then they give the check. 72% of the time here, black is winning because of the move g6, and now black is completely winning. Uh, normally, this tactic wins them a rook. The problem is that the queen protects that square. A lot of people forget that the queen not only hits the knight, but defends the rook on the long diagonal. And so if people play queen h5 here, now they simply have a queen and a knight both under attack. Uh, if they play something like this, attacking your queen, before you take theirs, you give a check, and then you win the queen. So this is a 72% success rate after five moves that they are gonna play queen h5. Thousands of games have gone like this, and you're just completely winning. Now, just a quick, you know, ma making sure you can survive this attack on your king. What you would do is slide out of the way. And I put all these moves in the description, but in general, you're obviously trying to block your king, finish your development. But the queen is also looking to continue to bully white. So you're still doing very well. 
But if pawn takes, you have check, but you also have like knight e7 kicking out this queen, taking and activating your pieces. So that might happen. Uh, if we go back, white would take the knight and then take on e5, and then you would play queen d4. If white ever takes on f5, then we know we shove our pawn forward. So bishop takes knight is really not scary as long as you remember to open up your queen and your bishop. Uh, we have a practice game a little bit later where my opponent plays the move d3. And then what I do is, again, I take because it's available. Uh, and then I, I develop this so that I don't get hit with queen h5. The difference is I don't have my queen here. So knight f6, and then we build and we try to castle very quickly. So yeah, bishop c6 is really not so scary. Uh, e takes f5, you're going to face a lot as well. You're going to face this move a lot because you just played this. And people just sort of get tunnel vision. They're just like, oh, it's a pawn. I'm going to take it. Wonderful. So you go forward. Um, I already showed you after knight here, you have queen g5. In this position, they can pin the pawn to your king. It's very important that you remember that when they pin the pawn to your king, you unpin the pawn with the same queen move. Queen e2, queen e7. Now their knight is in danger again. They could go here. And then here you would just jump into the middle with knight d4. And they're in huge trouble. So two things are under attack. Uh, three. If the queen moves here, then you have this move. And now, here we go, right? So, uh, just, just, just very nice position. Um, you're all, I think you're actually guaranteed to win the bishop with, like, b5. So, uh, and, and if a4, you have a6. So, totally winning. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, queen e2, queen e7. At this point, white has to take the knight, believe it or not. I just told you it's not scary. They have to take the knight so they can go here. And I recommend very simple play. Of course, you can take with the deep on, but even B takes here is not unreasonable. And then something like knight f6, although here even knight h6 is a good move uh, to maybe try to play knight takes f5. But knight f6 is totally reasonable. Uh, castles by white, c5, bishop b7, etc. Uh, yeah, I mean, e takes f5, e4. It's okay. Every time they take, you're going to shove the pawn forward. Um, and then there's a handful of moves here where white can sort of defend the center. So d3, knight c3, and queen e2, they're all sort of the same. If d3, what I'm recommending is to take, and then knight f6. In this position, white... Uh, you're not threatening to take this, by the way. I just want you all to be very clear. Uh, you're, you're way too loose to play this. You're not developed enough, and you don't want to get blasted. So what I recommend is if white castles, you play d6. And then what you do here is you play like bishop e7, try to play bishop e6, and castle. So something like this, 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 castle, you know, king h8. And now you see the power of this, of this position. You get the rook here on the open file, and I mean, you just have a nice, nice attacking position with bishop g4 coming, blah, blah, blah. So defending the, the, the center is really nothing scary. Uh, however, if they don't castle, and you have the opportunity to develop your dark squared bishop, you should do it first. So you'll notice, and what I just showed you, uh, White Castle, you don't really, you can't pin. But you'll see in the practice game, I did get a chance to develop my bishop. And then what I did is uh, I took, I took and I went like this. Because now we damage white structure and then we castle our king. You do have to be a little bit careful of the light squares here. So there are various situations where the opponent might, you know, try to like check your king. But believe it or not, and you're going to see this in the first practice game, losing this pawn is nothing. Like losing the pawn here, actually black is still better because of how strong our structure is and how bad white's uh, prospects are in the next few moves. But you'll see. Again, that's why the practice game is there. That's why the moves are in the description. So, yeah, I mean, anytime they defend the middle, um, you're going to take it and kind of follow up with knight f6 and development. Even if they play knight c3, same idea. And then even take with the queen. This is one of my favorite and easiest positions to play. Like, again, look how powerful this is. Again, if they take, they're just... This is very bad news for white. It's about to get real ugly. Which is why the Yanish, to me, is, is so powerful. I mean, f5 is just such an annoying move. Um, there, there are, of course, other options. Uh, I think d3 is the best move, according to Stockfish. Uh, and then Stockfish, with best play, finds like 0.7 advantage. But by no means is this losing for white. Uh, for black, by no means. Uh, by no means at all. Uh, it's hardly a gambit, actually. Um, and then you've got to learn some other stuff. You know, what if they blow up the center? Uh, if they blow up the center, again, more often than not, FE4. If they leave this on the table, you should probably do it. Something like knight E5, even queen F6 here is, re is probably reasonable. Takes, takes, uh, C6, 
Uh, there's some insane gambit here with knight c3. It's not it's not great, but it's also not like losing. But again, you're trying to play check and win the pawn. So I've actually I've seen this before. I've seen and then d5 and black is just much better. Uh, so yeah, I mean the center explosion. You've got to obviously do a little bit of your homework, but by far the most common moves you're gonna face are taking here, taking here, uh, and pff, maybe maybe d3 or just defending the middle of the board. But uh, yeah, now you know a fantastic weapon to beat the Roy Lopez. And uh, we're going to look at two practice games. I hope you enjoy. Uh, we are playing against the 1291 Blitz rated player. And then we are going to be playing against the 15 1600 rated player. Uh, uh, here we go. E4, E5. Knight F3, Knight C6. Uh, and F5. Um, so I've told uh, the individual... Okay, so we have D3. Very solid move. Um, I told the individuals playing to not repeat. So hopefully our next person who is watching this game is like, all right, I'm not going to you know, I'm not gonna play in the same way. Uh, D3 is very solid. I think the higher up you go in the rating ladder, the less you're going to get people trying to instigate here in the middle of the board. Uh, as I mentioned in uh, the earlier part of the recording, uh, yeah, so knight c3 is a move. Castling is also fine. This gives us the added option to play bishop b4 and then d6. So if the opponent were to castle here, taking is just too risky. We really, I, I like this kind of more cagey approach. Um, but now we have a way to develop our dark squared bishop. So this is not like a chaotic, crazy, you know, dumb uh, gambit. Queen e2, interesting. Okay, and this is good. You build practical experience. So this move, there's always queen c4 stuff, um, which really makes me want to play d6 now or take first. I don't think I have to rush taking first, so I might play, uh, I might just play d6. Uh, if this, this, and then this, I think I can always just even kind of slide back. I could take. Obviously, I could take. Uh, but I don't want to. Now I, I also could take. I think I will take. So I'm going to damage the pawns. Um, so something can always go to g5 in these positions. So I have to be a little careful. h6 is also a little bit, I think, maybe a little bit premature. Um, I'm actually going to castle. So I think there's some variations uh, in these positions where white wins your pawn. Uh, but in winning your pawn, white sort of walks the queen out to the edge of the board, and then the queen really doesn't have a whole lot of squares to go to. While I can play for e4, I have the open f file, so I really like this, uh, even this, e e even if you kind of don't get, like, all the, all the spots exactly that you, that you want to hit in your, um, uh, in your, in your Yanish or your Schliemann, um, it's okay. Like, your opponent can win a pawn, but... Uh, you know, I, I, I don't think it's anything too intimidating. So rook b8. Now the threat is bishop b7, right? So bishop b7 will simply win me this pawn. Uh, also, these pawns are really not that intimidating. So my opponent misses bishop b7. I just have to check if I have anything better. I really don't think I do. So we are immediately winning back a pawn. And I, I actually think this could, get, this could get really out of hand for white really quickly. Because I'm threatening rook f3. So rook takes f3, and I think, well, yeah, I mean... Unless I can play knight here. But rook takes f3 looks very good. Uh, there is this move, which is kind of funny. Rook take, my opponent can sacrifice back. Um, yeah, rook takes f3 is just a dynamite strike. And um, by the way, the reason I made the time control a little bit faster in this video, normally I play like 5 or 10 minute games, is because actually I want to analyze more than I want to have us like having a lot of time. I just, you know, for the sake of the video, wanted us to uh, play a little faster. That's a great move. Um, now my rook is hanging. So d5 would pick up the rook. I gotta calculate here real quick. So d5, uh, queen could go here, take, take, uh, take, take. Fork is good. I also think keeping it simple with bishop e4 is completely reasonable. Uh, I could always move the rook back, although that kind of feels like I'm going in the wrong direction. Yeah, d5 strikes me as very, very smart. So I think I'm gonna do it. Uh, the reason I think this is better is because now I actually attack the queen as well. And if the queen goes somewhere, uh, then I'm going to take on e4, uh, and uh, this is going to be open toward the bishop, which is what, yeah, I think that move is required. Now I'm going to go here, then they're going to take, and then I'm going to take. So I, I'm, I'm still winning a pawn, and I, and I have a very powerful kind of presence near this king if I can get my queen down there somehow. Uh, they cannot go here because, of, oh, because the bishop is hanging, actually. And now I'm just totally winning. Queen c7 doesn't lead to anything. Um, 
Queen takes f2. The re I will analyze it afterward, obviously, but uh, yeah, it, it doesn't lead to anything. I actually can win this game in a very beautiful style. I think I can sack my queen. This is completely unnecessary, but I think I can do it. I think I'm going to go queen g2 takes takes and then put my rook on f8 and play rook f1. Can I do that? I'm going to go here. Look at this. This is incredible. And now rook f8. And I'm going, wow. 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 The Schliemann f file, huh? Wow. Look at that. The F file, yeah, my opponent has this move, but uh, what happens is, I, I mean, I'm still going to, I'm going to promote to a knight. Okay, they didn't let me have any fun. Now I'm going to go for this pawn. So we obviously, we're just, we're just a bishop up in an endgame. We should go target the weaknesses. We've grabbed another pawn. Uh, and we have a two-on-one situation, so we can just advance. Uh, in in endgames like this, it's important not to kind of like rush and let the king take you. So you can always take your time a little bit, bring your king um, opponent is choosing to play this out. They are well within their right to do so. I oftentimes tell subscribers they don't have to resign if they get losing positions in videos. Um, but bringing the king is good. The, the pawns are just the permanent problem for white. And as the king has to stand over there and defend, I'm just going to go over here and eat the pawns. I don't have to eat that pawn. I can just make another, another queen. So our king is boxing in this king. The second, well, it's too late. And we just have to avoid stalemate. So we're going to do this, and it's going to be mate on f1. Okay, so that was obviously a very, very quickly played game, right? We played that game very fast. So I wanted to reserve a lot of time uh, for analysis. Uh, so we have, you know, the Yanish, and he, opponent played d3. Um, and uh, as mentioned in the intro here, castles is the best move, but uh, bishop b4, uh, and to play d6 is very... I've never seen queen e2. And computer seems to think that d6 and taking is the way to go. And yeah, actually likes castles. And even though it looks like this is just a pawn blunder, uh, black actually has an incredibly reasonable position after rook b8. Like white just kind of struggles to make natural developing moves. If the opponent had not blundered this, like if they had ran away with the queen, um, you can, the computer still likes rook b6 to activate the bishop. Uh, but it, it even likes um, it even likes just going bishop g4 because again the idea is just to, to open up the king side if you play knight g5 looking for this I play queen e7 um, and then I can boot you and you just have a very very uh, like a very reasonable position so even for the cost of the pawn so if white goes pawn hunting which is very very natural for people in these positions there's really nothing too scary about it um, what ended up happening in this game is I won back the pawn on, you know, e4, uh, then obviously there was this dynamite strike, although here the engine finds this, this, and the bishop takes g2, which is incredible, with the idea being queen g5 check. <laughs> so, you see how the attack can develop very, very quickly, but I, I looked at this, and here, yeah, uh, d5, and, you know, opening this position is very nice for black. Opponent could have not blundered the bishop. But then the game would have just proceeded with, you know, still a very big attack, very open king for white, and a totally winning position for us. And that is how we won this first game. Let's move to the second one. It has a profile photo of baby Hikaru. I've told this person uh, prior to observe the last game and not play in the same way, just so we can kind of get a little bit of variety. Um, so f5, I don't know what my opponent's going to do. Okay, they take. Uh, let's go with d6. And d3. Wow. Okay, so another very solid thing. Yeah, d3 is interesting. Um, huh. <laughs> Knight f6 is still playable, but now this move, I guess we can take on e4. Knight f6, they could take, and then we might lose the e-pawn. I guess, I guess I shouldn't, like, reinvent the wheel. I, I guess I should just take on e4 here, right? This is sort of... But, but they can still do this. So... Yeah, okay, so we kind of get the same position. Um, it's, it's kind of the same situation. So queen d4 now, I don't think is as good as it was in, in what we analyzed. This is now not good because queen h5 is coming, so you have to be very careful. So I'm going to play knight f6. Uh, very interesting. I, I've, never, I've never seen bishop c6 and d3, which is why, you know, it's good. Because uh, I'm not, I, I'm recording these games actually uh, be, before I'm recording the theory portion. A little spoiler for, uh, for anybody, uh, you know who's interested in the production of this content. Uh, so bishop d6, I want to develop my piece and castle, because obviously we like that in, uh, in, in, in the Yanish. We like the, uh, the open f-file, it's one of the major strong points of the opening. 
Knight back to c4. Okay, I could be really annoying and not trade here. I don't have a Greek gift. I definitely don't have a Greek gift. Um, hmm, interesting. I really don't want to give up my bishop. <laughs> Maybe bishop g4, just develop a piece, but then they could still take. Bishop b7. I really don't want to play bishop b7, though, because it's, it's such a lame move. Ah. Uh, I don't want to trade pieces, but I also don't want to play bad moves. I don't know what to do. And obviously, you should not spend this much time in an actual game. Uh, knight c4 is an annoying move. Okay, I'm going to go bishop... <sighs> Fuck. Folks, I'm unhappy. I'm not happy with, uh, with, with this. I gotta, we we, we got to review this line. We got to review this line. I guess I'm going to castle. I'm not very happy. I, I really don't want to trade the pieces. I don't want to play an endgame. Ugh, gross. Roast! Ah, oh, the Schleeman is all about attack. Like, queen takes, and I don't want to trade queens. You understand? I, I don't, I don't want to trade queens. Okay, I, you know what? Let's just do this. I, this is not the best move. But I'm, I'm too stubborn for my own good. You know? Uh, Bishop f5 is an option. Let's take also an option and play d5. So we're very solid. I mean, what are you going to... What are you going to do? You, you, you cannot always sit down for a game of chess and deliver checkmate. But you can try. But you can try. I have a very nice pawn structure. My, my center pawns are very good. They're controlling the movement of, that, of, of, of his knight, queen b6. So queen b6 is getting out of the pin and targeting the b2 pawn. But I, I don't have anything that's like immediately winning. For example, I need to develop my bishop at some point, And then I need to bring my rook. Uh, knight g4 actually is kind of interesting because I will have some attack on the f2 pawn. So we are in fact still trying to deliver checkmate even though I've just said multiple times that we cannot deliver checkmate. But we're trying, because again, we have the open f-file. And the good thing about the Schliemann is that we can double the rooks on the f-file. That's real scary. Uh, knight g4, I'm gonna play it. I don't expect my opponent to hang mate, uh, but I think this move also allows me to develop my bishop with kind of a tempo. Uh, the move b3 here uh, weakens the knight a little bit. So the knight, if the, if the white queen moves away from the knight, the knight no longer has any defense. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's sort of what we're doing. We're trying to develop all of our pieces in sort of a wave. So every move we've made, queen b6, knight g4, then bishop f5, is going to come with a tempo. We are making moves and creating threats at the same time to improve our position, which will ultimately just land us in good territory. Now, my opponent is now spending all their time. So they kind of escaped from the opening, and now they're... Uh, now they're kind of scared. I don't know why they're scared, but um, they seem a little bit scared. Okay, yeah, that's a move for sure. Uh, I could trade, but I kind of want to give mate. Haven't I talked about this? Actually, how do you stop that? You, you have to move a pawn in front of your king. And normally one move threats like this aren't very good, but you have to weaken your position now. Like white either has to play the move f4 here, which is quite weakening to the bishop, or g3, which is extremely weakening to the dark squares, and I can immediately hop in. I, I think f4 is actually the better move, if I'm being honest. But then again, bishop f5, and every move I'm making is going to come with an attack. Every single move. I'm not going to slow down. And actually, f4 loses a pawn. f4 loses a pawn. I have a quick combination there. Bishop f5, and then I can get this pawn because the queen has to protect these two. Right. So I really like knight e5 and getting into f3 now. This was, the, this was my intention. So I'm, I'm getting in on the light squares. So my opponent weakened themselves and I immediately take advantage by attacking the queen. Um, I actually don't know what white can do because queen d1, there is even this bulldozer. So this actually might just be completely lost immediately, which is nuts. That's not what I expected. Bishop g4 now, tempo winning move. f3 is not possible because... We just take, although it might still be the best move. I'm not, I mean, it might actually still be the best move because you have no other way to survive. The, oh, they hung the queen. Wow. Wow. Actually, I think the queen, the queen loss was, was sort of forced there. And now we try to get the queen right here with the move queen c8 and queen h3. That is actually insane how quickly that position fell apart. Like, it fell apart in five moves, which shows you the power of this opening. Have I convinced you to play this opening yet? And we can just pre-move mate. That's wild. How quickly it went 
from probably equal to just completely lost is actually unbelievable. Now, in this position, I, I, I knew I was doing well, but I, of course, I know I'm not better at all, but I had a feeling I was doing well. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, in the span of just a couple of moves, like to get a basically totally winning position, yeah, I mean, what, what can I say? Uh, that's the power of the Yanish. <laughs> uh, let's just quickly review D3. So yeah, the computer thinks that the... Okay, I played the right way. I took and I played knight f6. I was also thinking to play knight f6 like this, but I didn't like this because I thought that here I'm just losing a pawn. And I'm right. I actually, I did it the right way. So okay, when in doubt, generally you're taking. And, you know, then you're playing knight f6. You're not playing like this because queen h5 is just... It's a draw, actually. And it's apparently not even losing. It's a draw after queen h... Yeah, so... Be careful, be careful. But the way we did it in the game, but was bishop d6 the right move? Knight c4 and castle. Yeah. So I did, I did, I did the right thing. I mean, just sometimes the the, the Yanish can be very solid and you know can end up as a draw. But um, two for two. Hopefully you learned about the concepts of the opening. As I said in the intro, uh, this is actually one of my recommendations in my Black Gambit's repertoire. I haven't told you all the secrets of it, but I've guided you along the way. The moves are in the description. Feel free to pr play around with all the moves and. Um, Happy hunting. Now you have another very powerful weapon uh, with black, not just against uh, the Italian, but also against the Rui.